Chu in 2010 looked at nine month olds to see if they show evidence of using things like over hypotheses, which again for our purposes are interesting because of how similar they are to linguistic parameters, right? One thing, one more abstract hypothesis connecting to a lot of very specific properties, right? So in this experiment, the idea was that when infants were provided with partial evidence about a few objects in a few categories, this is a non linguistic example. Can these infants form a more abstract generalization over hypothesis, right? Something more abstract that will then apply to a new property, a new category of object they haven't seen before. So here's how it went. There were training trials where infants observed four different objects being pulled out by an experimenter who had her eyes closed. So she's not choosing them, she's drawing randomly into this box. And look, hey, in the first box there are four circles. Ooh, in the second box there are four squares. Oh, in the third box there are four triangles, right? The objects are different colors, but always have the same shape, right? So the idea would be you notice that. So if infants have created an over hypothesis that all objects in the box have the same shape, right? Same property applying to many different instances, different colors, but same shape from training allow you to say form that over hypothesis. Then here's what we should expect to see. Then if you reach into a new box and you pull out two things that are the same shape, a shape you've never seen before, you've never seen stars before, but in same shape, well that fits your over hypothesis, right? That's not surprising. That should be boring. But what happens if you reach into the same box and you pull out something that has a different shape? So you pull out a star and then you pull out a circle, even if the circle is a thing you've seen before. Right? If you form this over hypothesis, you do not expect to see different shapes coming out of the same box. This should be really surprising if you have that over hypothesis. Right? And then just as a control condition, just to make sure it's not just generally exciting when you pull out two different shapes, if you pull out the first shape, the star from that box, and then reach over here to that first box and pull out a circle, where you had circles before, then that should not be surprising, right? Because you pulled it the circle from the circle box, you pulled a star out of a new box, doesn't go against your over hypothesis, right? This shouldn't be surprising. And importantly, this outcome just the fact that you have two different shapes sort of resting in front of that fourth box is the same as this one, but what differs is the generating process. Here you generated them by pulling them out of the same box, and that's weird because that violates your over hypothesis. Here you generated them by pulling them out of different boxes, which isn't weird at all based on that over hypothesis, right? So these are your experimental and control condition. And this, uh, you know, again, the only difference here is how the outcome was generated, which, you know, doesn't go against the over hypothesis. So this is what we expect if infants are able to create an over hypothesis that all objects in a box have the same shape. And guess what? That's exactly what happened, right? These are the different looking times we see in these different conditions. And you get surprised when you're generating things with different shapes, right? Because it goes against the over hypothesis. And this is happening at nine months old, right? So the idea is that hopefully, since nine month olds appear able to form over hypotheses from very limited data sets, this should give us hope that they can also use linguistic parameters, which again are very similar in this respect of having a more abstract generalization connecting to more specific properties.